Good morning, and it's always welcome to St. Ambrose. We invite you to join us in saying the rosary immediately following Mass for the people of Ukraine and for world peace. Our Mass intention this morning is for Ed Rubin and Chuck Yeager. And our opening song is 549, Joyful, Joyful. Let us rise and join together in singing Joyful, Joyful. <laughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Uh, today we're celebrating, uh, at the bishop's request, uh, the feast of St. Augustine, who is the patron saint of our diocese, and uh, the bishop is uh, getting ready to uh, lead us through another of the kind of special years that we've had. We had a year of the Holy Spirit, the year of the Eucharist. Um, now we have a year to pray for the holiness of priests and for vocations. Um, These years help us to focus uh, on, on whatever the year is about. So we had, a, we had a prayer to the Holy Spirit that we prayed regularly. And there will be another prayer for this year. Um, and this Feast of St. Augustine is uh, kind of a look what's coming, <laughs> sort of a day. Well, let's prepare our own hearts now to celebrate the wonders of God's work in a human being like Augustine and in people like us by acknowledging our sometimes uh, resistance to the work of grace, asking pardon and forgiveness for our sins. 
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Renew in your church, we pray, O Lord, the spirit with which you endowed your bishop, St. Augustine, that filled with that same spirit, we may thirst for you, the sole fount of true wisdom, and seek you, the author of heavenly love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. My child, conduct your affairs with humility and you will be loved more than a giver of gifts. Humble yourself the more, the greater you are, and you will find favor with God. What is too sublime for you, seek not. Into things beyond your strength, search not. The mind of a sage appreciates proverbs, and an attentive ear is the joy of the wise. Water quenches a flaming fire, and alms atone for sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the Lord's word is, God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. God, in your goodness, you have made a home for the poor. The just shall rejoice at the presence of God. 
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, you have not approached that which could be touched in a blazing fire and gloomy darkness and storm and a trumpet blast and a voice speaking words such as that those who heard begged no message be further addressed to them. No, you have approached Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem and countless angels in festive gathering and the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven and God, the judge of all and the spirits of the just made perfect and Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant and the sprinkled blood that speaks more eloquently than that of Abel. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On the Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees, and the people there were observing him carefully. He told a parable to those who had been invited, noticing how they were choosing the places of honor at the table. When you are invited, by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline at table in the place of honor. More distinguished guests than you may have been invited by him, and the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, give your place to this man, and then you would proceed with embarrassment to take the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, Go and take the lowest place, so that when the host comes to you, he may say, my friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. 
Then he said to the host who invited him, when you hold a lunch or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or your wealthy neighbors in case they may invite you back and you have repayment. Rather, when you hold a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. Blessed indeed will you be because of their inability to repay you, for you will be paid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Boy, lots, here we are at the beginning of school year, football season starting. We're at the beginning of a lot of things, nearing and approaching the end of summer. But we still have beautiful weather, and we've been very fortunate. Today's gospel reading from Luke deals with people gathered together at a meal. The reading. The kingdom of God, the perfect society, which is our end goal, is often pictured as a banquet. As such, it's a, me it's a meal for everyone, and it's not just a private dinner amongst a few friends, close friends. It's an occasion of sharing and joyfulness. In the New Testament, the meals that Christians share at the Eucharist is among them and are meant to be a true sign of that yet to be realized banquet and kingdom. Now today on the other hand Luke is describing a different type of meal gathering. A somewhat sinister tone is formed by the opening sentence on a Sabbath day Jesus had been had been uh, had gone for a meal to a house of one of the leading Pharisees. Now it should have been an occasion of communion and friendship, you would think. Instead, Luke tells us the people there were observing him carefully. They're not watching Jesus out of admiration or curiosity. They wanted to see if he, on the day of this Sabbath, would give them cause to accuse him of defying Jewish law. He was in fact judged before he even opened his mouth. And he noticed how the guests were choosing their places of honor when they were setting and gathering, setting at the table. During the meal, Jesus tells everyone the parable, directed first to the host, or excuse me, directed first to the guest, then to the host. And using a wedding banquet to make his point, Jesus is saying, do not consider yourselves so important to set at a place of honor. You might feel the embarrassment of being asked to set further away to allow a more distinguished guest to set in your place. Instead, set further away, and you may be asked to, be moved, to move up and by doing so, gain the respect of everybody there. What Jesus is saying to the guest is, everyone who rates themselves as important or privileged will at some point in time fall. Be humbled. But the one who is humble will be respected. Jesus is expressing, of course, the importance of humility. We are all the main characters in our own story. And as humans, we quite literally see the world from our perspective and with ourselves at the center. That's one reason why it's so hard for us to be humble. It's our nature to think of ourselves. When our perspective is me-centered, humbleness 
often gets pushed aside in favor of selfishness or pride. It's easier to serve our needs and let others fend for themselves. Being humble is more than not thinking of yourself as better as another person. It's a way of living. It's a condition of your heart. And it extends from how you think to how you speak and to how you act. It's the willingness to acknowledge one's own limitations and to benefit from our own weaknesses. We take a step forward when we're able to accept that I'm not as patient as I need to be with my family, or I find it difficult to say I'm sorry. I hold prejudices against certain people. I judge too harshly. I get upset sometimes too easily. Admitting our limitations help us move towards self-truth. True humility allows us to not just accept our weaknesses, it also helps us realize of our goodness and dignity, that we do have value. It also changes our viewpoints of others, allowing us to see the goodness of others and to treat them with respect. We don't see a lot of that going around. People who are proud, who feel they cannot do it, or that they feel that they can do it on their own, are not able to clearly see the respect that they should have for others. And that too we see too much today. They tend to relate to others in terms of what the other can provide for them. That's why Jesus gives that strong teaching directed to the host, the Pharisee saying you should not invite anyone <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> you should not invite anyone to a banquet that can repay you instead invite, invite the poor the crippled the blind and the lame he said it to make it very clear not to set yourselves above uh, above others <clears throat> and that our association with others should not flow from our use of them but from their value as people. The only status that has any meaning is one's relationship with God and with other people, regardless of their classification, by race, religion, profession, or class. Our real status is measured not by rank and how we feel how high we are in society, or our job, but by the level of love and service offered to God through our relationships with those around us. <clears throat> what counts is not how we're looked on by others, but the degree of care and compassion we look at them. And that, again, is something we don't see too much today. To look at someone with love and compassion. It's in love, it's in love and relationships that connects us to one another, which leads us to God. A proud person doesn't really see the essential, the essential quality of human relationships. They're blinded by their own selfish pride. He or she might be a very open and caring person, willing to give to others, but unaware of his or her limitations. Nor do they see how crucially we need one another. A person of humility recognizes the need 
for relationships. And as a result, finds God between us. Finds God between us. As Christians, we believe we're not self-sufficient. We can't truly live on our own. And we understand that God is to be found when we admit our limitations and accept our needs for one another. This important understanding is what makes love the highest of all Christian values. Love tells us that it's in our relationships to each other that we find God. Love is, without a doubt, the only road leading to God. And it's only the humble who will walk upon it. We have a second group of uh, extraordinary communion ministers who are ready for commissioning. I'd like to invite them up front. Dear friends in Christ, our brothers and sisters are to be entrusted with administering the Eucharist, with, the, with taking communion to the sick and with giving it as viaticum to the dying. In this ministry, you must be examples of Christian living in faith and conduct. You must strive to grow in holiness through this sacrament of unity and love. Remember that Though many, we are one body because we share in the one bread and one cup. As ministers of Holy Communion, be therefore especially observant of the Lord's command to love your neighbor. For when he gave his body as food to his disciples, he said to them, This is my commandment, that you should love one another as I have loved you. Therefore, are you resolved to undertake this office of giving the body and blood of the Lord to your brothers and sisters and so serve to build the church? You say, I am. <laughs> are you resolved to administer the Holy Eucharist with utmost care and reverence? Dear friends in Christ, let us pray with confidence to the Father. Let us ask him to bestow his blessings on our brothers and sisters, chosen to be ministers of the Eucharist. Merciful Father, creator and guide of your family, bless our brothers and sisters. May they faithfully give the bread of life to your people. Strengthened by this sacrament, May they come at last to the banquet of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> we'll now continue the prayers of the faithful.
for church leaders, especially Pope Francis. May they help the faithful grow in holiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, for peace and justice for all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families, as they prepare for a new school year, may they be blessed with safety and health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and suffering pain, lonely and forgotten, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and all in need of financial help, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sister diocese, our sister parish, and our St. Ambrose parish family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, those in our book of intentions, and for those requesting prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Ed Harubin and Chuck Yeager, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now ask the intercession of our Blessed Mother as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. We ask this through Christ our Lord. So I'm now going to give them uh, their certificate, uh, which is valid for two years beginning today. Clap for them. Thank you very much and wish you well. You can now be seated. Continue. Let us sing together our song uh, of preparation, number 475, Shelter Me, O God.
Pray, dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Celebrating the memorial of our salvation, we humbly beseech your mercy, O Lord, that this sacrament of your loving kindness may be for us the sign of unity and the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. And in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new. And you offer us in sure signs of your love that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. <laughs> Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Four. 
for, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Ambrose and St. Augustine, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. At the Savior's command, and formed by Jesus' own divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ.
the announcements. Coffee and donuts will be served between the masses starting September 11th. Please call the office to volunteer to help set up, serve, and to clean up. The Rectory office will be closed on Monday, September 5th, in observance of Labor Day. We have mailed out our summer and fall newsletter. Please call the office if you did not get one to verify your contact information. Thank you. Have a blessed week. Thank you very much, Liz. So I have, I have two things uh, for you today. As you know, the school year is beginning, and also our religious education uh, program is also starting. So I would like to introduce to you our catechists, uh, those who are helping us in this program. There's also a request for more support. So uh, let me request all our, our teachers to come forward, please. And also I will request Eileen to come here, too. So uh, you see, this is this is our team. <laughs> so uh, she's Eileen, and she's in charge of the uh, the adult uh, religious formation RCIA. Do we have people helping? Do we have some people helping? Yes. Yes, and this, this team is part of this team. Yes, and then for the religious uh, education, uh, we have our new religious ed education coordinator. She is here. You. Would you like to tell them your name? is form win, the opposite of lose. So, <laughs> so we are not losers, we are winners. Then we have, okay, just tell them your name. Yeah, so uh, she's uh, the coordinator. Then we have three. Anne is not here. And then she chose to be a substitute. And then uh, last week uh, we made a request for people to, 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 uh, to come in and help us. So I got a call from Pat. She's not here. She'll also be helping. So we have four and one substitute. So it means we are still less. Yeah, so because of that, we, we are combining some, some grades until uh, we, we get enough teachers to be able to split all of them. So if you would like the program to be very vib uh, vibrant, so you can be a substitute, you can uh, volunteer to team teach, so uh, teaching with someone else together. Or, or also you can be also your presence in that class 
It's wonderful. So I want to request for your uh, support for either team teaching, substitutes, or just being there in the class. That would be wonderful. So we'd like the program to really, we, want, we are here, we want to go here. And with your help, the program will be wonderful and the, the future of, the, of St. Ambrose should be bright. So please clap for our teachers. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Father Mike and Deacon, come and congratulate our teachers. Come, you're also part of this team. Okay, and now since Father Mike just celebrated 50 at Golden, would, would you okay. give them a Golden Blessing? A Golden Blessing? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, this is both Golden and Olden. <coughs> May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you, friends. Thank you so much for all of you. So much. And now, uh, one last thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our deacon here, deacon, uh, deacon L, on September 2nd, right? Yeah, he'll be, cele he'll be celebrating his 20th anniversary as a deacon. Uh, those are two decades. And at the same time, he, he also made his request to, to the bishop to retire. So, and the bishop has accepted his request, and now he has only one month of active ministry. So, uh, We'll express our thanks to him. So maybe I'll, I'll provide some uh, thank you cards maybe next week. You can pick one and then write something there. Then towards the end of the, uh, of, of the one month, we'll have some celebration as we thank him for those 20 years. So uh, he's, he's not going to speak today. <laughs> well, I would like to add that Deacon Hal, who is recovering from Shoulder, shoulder surgery. He and I were ordained together uh, 20 years ago. So uh, he also, he and I are both celebrating 20 years. Mm -hmm. So we need uh, more. We need replacement now. So that's why we going to pray very hard for more vocations. So that now we have a replacement and we have continuity. Very soon I'll be also be retiring. <laughs> okay. let's, let's stand for prayer. <coughs> May partaking of the Lord's table sanctify us, we pray, O Lord, that being made members of his body, we may become what we have received through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. After many years of devoted prayer by his mother, St. Monica, our diocesan patron, St. Augustine, made a positive change in his life. After that change, he made a tremendous difference in the world. So let us go forth determined to also make a difference as together we sing our closing hymn, number 493.